This is Richard back at you. Not too good of a Thursday morning, but we're going to make the best of it. But hey, can't be as bad as this, guys. But anyway, this is a tranny we did about 300 miles ago. Uh, we did it as a carryout. They put it in with a brand new motor, brand new radiator, stuff like that. Uh, about 300 miles uh, down the road, the cooler line popped off at the radiator. Now, let me give you an idea what these uh, cooler lines look like. Now, what they got is they got a little clip right here that uh, goes on this cooler fitting right here. Get in there. Like that. Now, this here will plug in there. If I can get it in there. I got this out back, so it might not go. Hey, you know what? That could be a long neck one. They do. Make oh, it long is. Neck, it is a long necks. neck. But yes. okay. But anyway, this will go in there and clip on. And once that clips on, you're supposed to slide this ring over it like that. That way, it holds this clip on. If you don't put that on there and you leave it bare like that, it will push that snap ring out and it will blow the cooler line out. Now these are at the tranny and these are at the radiator. So this is what happened to this tranny. 300 miles, brand new motor, brand new radiator, brand new, nice, nice tranny. So, uh, the customer's, he's mad, but he's not mad at us. He's mad at himself, and luckily he was driving it himself uh, when it happened. Uh, he said he could have been mad at other people. He thought they might have tore it up or something, but uh, he's not mad at us or anything like that. So, But we're going to get this thing apart and see what it looks like. It's got the uh, deep rear lube style 4L80E you have to put a fitting back in there that has the long neck on it that way it reaches the support if you put a short one in there it's going to uh, drop oil back into the pan not even get to the, into the lube circuit to uh, lubricate the tranny Now we're taking off our uh, neutral safety switch right here. Even though we did it a while back, I'm going to still come in here and file on this a little bit. Try to knock down any burrs. That way it comes right off. See how easy that. If you don't do it, it'll stop right there. Then you got to take a screwdriver and nine times out of ten you'll break it. And we don't want to do that. So. Now you notice we have a front speed sensor here, and we have a we have a dummy back here. Now some of them will come with one here and here, but with, this is his design right here. So now I believe he said he lost reverse. I'm really not for sure, that, but uh, I believe that's what he said. Got a really nice deep pan here. I've got my trigger down really nice with my Milwaukee gun here. It's a little different switching over, but it works really nice. Now he said he lost reverse in this thing, so I bet he probably lost third gear because if you burn up, he wasn't going backwards when the cooler line come off. Oh, Mercy, man. does this thing got a, a stink to it, guys. But I'm believing he probably burnt, there's no telling really, but uh, since he was going down the highway, but to lose reverse, he probably killed the third gear clutch. Uh, got this extension right here for the deep pan for the filter. Late model filter, got the bumps on it. And we have our pressure control solenoid here and a PWM solenoid here. And 
what we got here, what we did is this is our pillow switch. These are our two shift solenoids here. Get this way. Now if you notice here, we added, this is a transgo uh, part of a shift kit we add. We drill some holes here and, and put a blow-off valve right here. Uh, this tranny is capable of having real high line pressure issues and we build them back. We try to correct that, but when they get wear in them, uh, in the pump and stuff like that, this thing can make 600 pounds of pump pressure. And it's capable of breaking pistons and all kinds of stuff. So this kit we put in there eliminates, uh, it doesn't eliminate that problem, but it eliminates uh, it from being able to get there, it blows it off that way, so. And then this tube right here in the back, I showed, I had another video out, I showed you you had a tube that come here to the front, all the way to the back to rear, to lubricate the bushing and the tail housing bushing, but here it's a later version, they added the tube here that does the same thing. The short one. Just a little short one. Or the other one, it come from here and all the way to the front. Yes. yes and you sir. can go back and watch a lot of my other videos and stuff and see uh, what they look like. Now, even though we put a new wiring harness in here, we still still reseal, we sealed the, the plug. Because we, we just don't trust it. That way we know that uh, it's not going to leak. That 3M stuff, guys, it, it's just awesome. All these bolts are the same length here until you get to the pillow switch and then they change to an 8 millimeter. Now sometimes you can't get to this tin here without uh, removing the pillow switch. It's just real tight quarters through there. Looks really good. Now this thing does have a transgo kit through it all the way. Get this check ball. I don't want to lose these check balls anymore. They're getting to where they're hard to come by. Let's see, I'm gonna have to. Now the shift kit comes with a different bolt right here for the overdrive housing. Normally it's a, a like an aluminum looking bolt. Before that turned. Yeah. I'd say the Transgo kit comes with a hardened black bolt and it'll come with a washer. Now this is a hollow bolt still compared to the little aluminum one that they uh, use. And you got all your check balls. I'm hoping he didn't do a whole lot of damage to this thing, but the way it's looking, it uh, looks like it's got a lot of clutch material in the pan.
Now some of these will come with a Teflon seal and a rubber seal. This has rubber seals on this here. They will not really, re they will retrofit, but I like to try to put a rubber back where it come from. So. And we have our lock up o-ring here. Now this thing has all billet shafts. I'm gonna stop right here on this o-ring and Annie's in there raising cane, so Trent's gonna go see who's at the front door. We'll be right this back. This is our Richard back at you. Annie was trying to eat the mailman, so we had to stop her from doing that. So we've got our lock up o-ring off. This, now this does have a billet input shaft right here. You can see the difference in the color. A standard input shaft, is, it's, I don't have one laying around right at this second to show you, but a, uh, excuse me, yes I do. Now you can see the difference in the color of a billet shaft and a standard shaft. I said we just did three of these for our lady E's. I still have one more to do, so. You notice we always double seal our bolts no matter what. Whether you put new O-rings on or not, you always want to double seal it. I say this thing's got 300 miles on it, guys. That's all it has on it. Zero miles. Uh, hopefully, we don't have much damage. He said it worked beautiful. Pump looks really nice. Bushes still look brand new. Pump gears, hopefully. Oh yeah, beautiful. Still look brand new. And we'll come here and look at the pump bushing because it was brand new. No low side really. Looks really good, fresh all the way around. You can see a little bit of tank to something maybe, but it looks really nice. Pump body looks good. Now we'll still put a new bushing. We go back through here. It's got to have all new seals. I mean, it's basically not a total overhaul, but pretty dang close. Now when you start to burning them up. What did I do? Now this is our overdrive planetary and our uh, engine brake clutch here. Come on, quit, quit shaking. That beautiful billet shaft, the new Teflon seals look really nice. All new bushings in here, both sides. Really nice new Sprague assembly. Like I said, I don't remember if we put planets and stuff in this. They still look, they look brand new. They say you just never know until we take these apart what all is going to be going in them uh, because uh, some of them come in just totally melted, some of them don't. Got a brand new engine brake clutch. Bushing still looks nice. Yeah, this was a brand new drum here. Mm -hmm. You still see all the part bluing on the sun gear and stuff, so it looks really nice. Here, look at our overdrive clutch. He said he, he lost reverse, so I'm thinking third gear is totally gone. Overdrive clutch still looks brand new. Get in here. Look at this bushing. This bushing is real critical, guys, right here. If this bushing goes bad, it'll wear down in here. And you don't want uh, this shaft to be touching, so looks really good. But whoo, looky here, guys. We got some heat right there. But it, it uh, did pull in. Oh, no, excuse me. It did not pull in because he brought it in. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't drive it in. So we don't physically know how, what it looked like. But the forward clutches are cooked. Yep, she smells good. Gosh. Third gear clutches, you know they're... Oh, don't tell me. Oh, 
Mm. Well, he, he cooked this whole thing up, didn't he? The intermediate clusters are probably going to be toast. Intermediate shaft. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Stopped. Yeah. Uh, well, that's got to build an intermediate shaft too. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. That's why he was so mad. Oh, oh come man. on. Sorry guys, I'm trying to focus but help him. Maybe take the clutch pack out. I said I don't have nothing here. Uh, okay. Maybe I could stand the socket up right here. I might get behind that, but I gotta have something here. My green one. <laughs> the hammer for support. There you go. Oh, oh my gosh. This is, it's really sad that you spend so much time on these and you get them back like this. It's terrible. You know, I'll build it stuff. Glove down. Glove down. Glove down. This stuff, this stuff smells bad. Oh yeah, it is. This thing burn all the heck. But, uh. Get my other glove on. So you can tell he was probably going forward and in third going down the road when it lost. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'd have to check to see if third stays on for fourth okay. to verify that. Yes, but sir. I, but anytime you lose third, you're going to lose reverse. So right. it, there's just there ain't no clutch material. And that's an Allison clutch. That's a green clutch. That's yeah. a green Allison clutch. Oh. I show you what a brand new one looks like. This had a wave. You know, mm -hmm. We'll leave the wave in here. That way it doesn't make it have an uncomfortable reverse. Because you can uh, make this thing shift pretty firm in third with the wave in it. But if you leave, take the wave out, your reverse comes really really rough. And it's a uh, customer complaint. So we don't want that. So we'll have to see if we can even clean this drum up. It's got so much rubber in here from the bonded piston. Let me just take it out real quick. See if I can find all my presses to get this out really quick. Let's see what it did to that. A lot of times it'll actually, this spring system right here had to be replaced too because it got so hot it makes it weak. Uh -huh. So you place the whole assembly. It's hard to replace these drums because with these uh, 
these 34 element type drums. As you can see, it just melted that bonded piston. Houston, we have a problem. We do, definitely. And then this here gets so hot, the spring tension's different. So, the drum, we can scotch bite this hopefully up and get this rubber off here. If we can't, we'll have to find another drum because that's all melted rubber that's attached itself to the drum. But mainly this surface here, where the new piston's gonna run, we gotta get that back down with Scotch-Brite, clean that up really good. Um, and I, we'll take this apart and look at the Sprague assembly, make sure it's good too. Because we don't wanna have to buy another one of these drums here. So the engine braking band still looks brand new because he wasn't probably man manually shifting it when uh, he was doing it, so. Or when the cooler not come off. Now, as you notice here, our intermediate clutches still look pretty good. Steels look good. But they're going to have to be replaced no matter how. We'll buy a complete kit to put back in here. Now, we pick our kits because of the Alice and stuff we put in these. We just don't buy a normal kit. We kind of... My tool guy, or my parts guy, he picks the stuff for me, what I use, and he's, I've been with him so long, I can just call and tell him, and he'll go back there. Instead of me piling up clutches or throwing them away that I don't use, I just, he picks it for me, so. Now this stuff down here, you sure you really don't want damaged, because um, all your lube circuit comes through here, keeps all this stuff lubricated. I believe, guys, we're gonna have to shut her down for a quick second, and uh, we'll be right back. Rear planetary assembly out of the case. We got our band pulled. The band, reverse band, still looks brand new. Looks really nice. Now we do have to pull the snap ring out of the case too that sits here under the support right here. So we get in here, let's look at our sun gear. Still looks really nice. You need to look on both sides of your teeth, front and back. Now we do have a billet intermediate shaft right here. We want to look at all that stuff, make sure there's no damage there. Because this was a pretty expensive tranny uh, to go through. Bushing looks brand new. Mainly want to look here. The billet shaft looks really nice still. Come here, look at the planet. Now the pins got hurt. I'm turned purple. So, it's going to take a little bit to get it back together. Not as bad as I thought. So, he's going to be excited there. So, if y'all need anything done, give us Holler Precision Transmissions. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a ton of more shows to come. So, y'all don't forget. Y'all have a wonderful day.